Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. I have another uh, ECM test and probably a repair because uh, I actually reproduce this concern here. So this is for Jim in Illinois. This is a 2006 Mumba Outback. Uh, it's a, a boat. This is a 5.7 in mark. It's a Mephi 5 uh, ECM. His concern says he even sent me a couple of gauges to check because he's not sure what the problem might be. Uh, going for or coming from because it looks like somebody already put you know he just got the boat somebody already put a computer on it and it said that it was reading something and then now it's not reading anything and yes i was able to, i'm able to reproduce that here so what i did is i'm going to walk you through is all the connections that, that i have here i'm going to show you also the wiring diagrams but let's go over to his concern it says the ecm wake up power uh let me see Purple wire did not have power coming out of the ECM. Well, that should not have power coming out of the ECM. It actually supplies power if I'm in the correct wire, which I think is um, the ignition feed, which is coming from the ignition switch. But it uh, still has no power. I did not feed ground to the ignition relay and did not feed ground to the ignition relay. Had one bolt on the map sensor, unplug all of the sensors with no change. It said they had continued to ground on the purple ECM wake up power wire, but also had 12 volts. So I'm not sure why he's saying about that. Um, so let me just um, show the connection. So let me get the diagram in here. I have it all open. Um, let me see, gauges and connectors. I'm trying to get all the information that we need fast. Uh, powers and grounds right here. All right, so I can click on that. All right, the first one that I'm going to show you, this is uh, a picture of the actual diagram that you can get from um, um, Diacom. If you have Diacom, which I have connected right here, and you go over to the books in here, and you click on in mark that will open this and you can select what you're working on that is the actual manual and we can you know scroll and find the pages um, to where those uh, diagrams are let me just uh, is any way i can see this pages i hate the adobe changing changing things and now it's a little different that i'm used to see <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Uh, no bookmarks. Okay, now I can see the pages. <laughs> a lot faster to scroll than in there. And you can see an image on the right. So you can see where the diagrams are. And that's exactly here. And I'm going to flip this page. And then that's, that's the diagram. So we have... Um, let me just scroll down to the ones that I'm going to need. This is the DLC communications of pins uh, in connector J3. They are marking actually in the computer. So this is J1. It's a 56 pin, I think. Then J2 is a 73 and J3 as well. Um, the pinouts are marked actually also on the computer. So you will have the J3, J2, and then pin 1 and so on, right? Very easy to locate the connections. So going in here, we can see that um, again, kind of high and kind of low are in J3 pin 33 and pin 55, uh, sorry, 53. We have the engine grounds on pins J373 and J273. These are these two big ones in here. I hope the light is uh, working that actually helps a little bit better to see but yeah so we got grounds in these two wires so these are the only two grounds the computer needs uh, pin j3 33 and 53 for the can bus i am connected that to the uh, diacom connector 94029 i already have it jigged out so i can i know which ones are the powers and grounds and that is coming from my simulator in here and then going into these two connectors that i used to connect in here 
Had to stop the dog if we're barking too much. All right, so these are again kind of high, kind of low. The two crowns. Oops. Okay, and I just did that. So give me one second. <laughs> All right, I put the lens and I'm actually using the light from the microscope, which helps a lot better to show you. All right, so uh, communications. Um, let's see what else we can see in here that I can show you. Um, not on this one. Let me keep scrolling down. These are, again, the DLC connectors, uh, coil. Um, these are the main powers, so this is good. So we can see that in here. Let me make this a little bigger. All right, so we have a power on um, J119, and this is the one I think he's calling purple because I all I see is PPL, which I think is purple, right? Uh, and then that's J, J119, which is coming from a fuse, which has a circuit breaker and it goes through the ignition switch so this should have power only with the ignition switch on uh, and i am providing that one again j119 so if we go here j119 i have it right here as a yellow wire so i always use yellow as ignition red as a power as a constant battery power and then oranges as uh terminal 87 which is our battery power after a relay like we see here so we have a constant j120 power that's a constant battery power that no ignition is always on and then the computer will command that relay on mfe system relay right will it will be commanded on by a ground uh, when the computer commands this relay on, then it will close the terminal 87, right? Terminal 87, it will supply power to these two um, pins on J2, connector J2, and 13 and 28. So I can see that these are, J, uh, again, 13 and 28 on the connector J2. How I know also there are those. If I look into the other one that I have open in here, nice on that same um, um, PDF diagnostic folder, it tells us how all the pinouts on each connectors and how they look. So again, 3353, but we can see if I go over to 13 and 28, where are located so that's exactly what i have these two powers that will only be on using as a terminal 87 on this last switch so if i provide a battery power which is right there now the computer should be on and i can see there is drawing almost 600 amps sorry 600 milliamps which is a little higher for something that is not even power up but that's what it is right now so if i turn it off you can see that it's now reading 0 0.04 so 40 milliamps and that's whatever else is connected in here but as soon as i turn this on it goes to 620 milliamps with no ignition that's a little high so this is already a hint that something is not right inside this computer uh, so the next thing that I'm going to do is then power up. But before I do that, I want to show you what else I have connected here. So we have, I am supplying also through two test lights, one for the fuel pump relay and the other one for the main power relay. So when the computer powers up, let's go back to this diagram that we were seeing. When the computer powers up, again, you provide a battery power and you turn the ignition on, these two relay com should come on. So you should have a ground side control coming for this uh, MEFI relay, because if we see the other side is power up. So terminal 85 is ground and terminal 86 is power. So this is a ground coming from the computer and it should light up as soon as you turn the ignition on. So if I turn the ignition on and that is not happening. So connector J140, so J140, I have this in here and I use a, a, a uh, sorry, a black, um, wire so i know this is a, a ground side activation and i've connected my test light to a power that i know is, is good and we can check that uh, just by if i unplug this from that relay let me just do this one second so we can see that indeed that test light and this power and ground is good because you always want to make sure that your equipment is working properly so let's do this in the video 
and you will do that same thing in the in the boat or in the car and we can see that that this light comes off this power and that ground are good so what is also telling me is that this computer is not sending that command to you know to turn this relay on which is the mephi relay let me plug that back in i'll be right back all right i connected that back so the computer is not commanding so we got power and ground powers and grounds and ignition now this should have already sent a signal to close this relay again the memory relay and then send that power here so this is already a problem this is not being command when i turn the ignition on also this should send a signal on j113 over to the fuel pump relay which in this case is connected to terminal pin 86 again pin 85 is a ground Remember, if we see here on this MEFI relay, terminal L, pin 80, 85, a terminal 85, right? It's coming from this pin and is ground, and the 86 is power. So they did mark this properly. So 85 is a constant ground. So the computer is sending on J113 a power feed to control this relay. Not a ground control, this is a power control. And I had that in here. So I connected that on the J113, which is one pin before the last. Let me just make sure that I am connected in the correct one. So if you see right here, we got a, net, a, a last pin, that's pin 14. Hopefully you can see that, and then 13. So again, I use a red wire showing that this is a power side control signal and then the other side of that test light is connected to ground and nothing happened again strike two right uh the next thing that i want to do since i have all that in there let's say you know i i uh, have a problem on the drivers that controls the relays well let's put the power on that should have come from terminal 87 to provide these two power feeds to the computer to work because the computer should have come on but it's not fully on until we receive these two powers again in connector j2 pin 13 and pin 28 the orange wires so right now those have power we have the same pretty much the same it went up a little bit but might be just because of the light here on the switches as you can see i got my three switches now on so constant battery that will be terminal 30 uh, terminal 15 is the second switch and terminal 87 is the last switch terminal 30 means constant pa battery power terminal 15 is ignition feed and terminal 87 is a battery power supply through a relay okay so you guys understand the terminology and this is very important to use it all the time because that's how most of the manufacturers and european vehicles work as well but then the next thing that i also have here and that's why i have my meter is a sensor ground and a sensor power five volts so the five volt reference and a, um, a sensor ground so then that is probably on the next page but i have already that let me just see kp sensors right here so what i did is i went and found that we got a 5 volt reference on j2 pin 43 this is a ckp so this is a very important sensor so i took that one in in consideration and i found also i think is j227 is a low reference so sensor ground sensor power we got another one on j240 and then j2 uh 24 again sensor ground sensor power we got another one but this is a different because it's a, a ect so the coolant temperature sensor is the only one that has a different uh, sorry a different five volt reference because this five volts is to be pulled down so this is not just a five volt reference it's also the signal so this is the thermistors you will not consider as the same as a three wire sensor all right but yeah everything is in here and as jim told me and his um diagnostic was right in the money as that uh, there is there's actually 0.67 of a bold on the fiber reference and the computer is not coming on so when i try to connect with diacom so i just click on the left corner 
go over to GMI, uh, Del Delphi uh, Mephi 5, select in here, this is going to try uh, 10 attempts to talk to the computer and see if a communication has been established, which I already know that it's not going to happen. So this is just to reproduce a customer concern and we, we see it's nothing happening. The other way that you can also talk in here is by OVD generic. It's called OVDM for both, so for boats. So if you click in here, this will open a generic layout and it will try to establish a communication just to see if, because this is like a, a emissions mandatory, right? So, and they have oxygen sensors and some other thing. This is a newer module, a newer boat, um, and it's uh, emissions regulated. But yeah, so we have 100% reproduce this concern. So the next thing that I need to do is open up the computer and see how much can we do or not on these computers. I have a thing one open, let me see if I can find it. All right, guys, uh, as you can see, same computer. I want to paint it black, but we have the same computer, same pinouts. This was a, a bad computer that was sent to me. Broken connectors and no more things that could not be repaired. Uh, this one has a little difference, and I think this is might be a Mephi 6 because you see there's no ground in here. And that's the, difference, the differences in between Mephi 5 and Mephi 6. You will see the connector J3 does not have a ground, like in this case here. You see ground, ground, there is not a ground in that one. But they look pretty much the same as far as the body is and some of the components inside. But yes, yeah, so we have a chance to look at of pretty much what we have in here. The rest is on the other side. And the only way to get to that, it will be to desolder the entire board and remove, which is a very expensive repair. And I will not recommend that to the customer because I think it's less expensive to get a module and program it than to do any repairs on the other side of the board, at least for now. But yeah, this is at least part one, reproducing the concern of the customer. Let me see if I find uh, the concern and hopefully for Jim and also for me as a business, I can repair the computer. All right, guys, so stay tuned. This is part one. Happy New Year. Again, God bless you all. And I wish you the best for 2024. See you next time. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye-bye.